Cops of Reddit. What is the most suspicious thing you've ever caught somebody doing for a totally legitimate reason? At around 2am on a weeknight, I see a guy bolt from a house in a quiet residential burglary hotspot. His face is covered, he's wearing sunglasses or something similar, and the kind of dark clothing you catch burglars in. As I follow him and start to shout up on the radio, the cars parked between us clear to reveal he is running on a lead behind the tiniest dog I've ever seen. A clearly uncontrollable pooch that is having the time of its life. I just kept going. Edit. Some clarification. The dog was on a lead. He was stopping to sniff lampposts and stuff, and it wasn't a dog napping. The man was running as he was trying to keep up with the dog while letting it go at the pace it wanted to. He ran from the house, but the front door was locked. Dog lit took off when they hit the pavement. When I got a closer look, the glasses were tinted, not sunglasses. I don't know why he had his face covered. It was a scarf and it was autumn. But we don't have sumptuary laws in our country and you can wear whatever you like. I'm not the fashion police. I spoke to him when I saw him later on, but I don't remember the dog's name. Sorry. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. Prior US Coast Guard. We were doing a security boarding on a vessel planning on entering port with some hazardous cargo. Me and one other guy are in the engine room, making sure everything is kosher, when we catch a glimpse of some boots barely sticking out from under a piece of machinery. Since, as far as we knew, all crew were present and accounted for above deck, we were understandably concerned. We radio up and ask about it. We get told all present and accounted for up above, so we're thinking stowaway or someone being smuggled. Luckily, it was neither. Just a dude who legit fell asleep while doing maintenance. He shared a name with one of the other crew, so that's how we missed his absence. Apparently they, our guy up above, checked the same guy twice. Go figure. But look, if you were smuggling someone into a country, that's a good cover. Make sure there's someone with the same name on the- I mean, no, they would know he's not part of the maintenance. Unless the entire ship was in on it. Are you sure, OP? Are you sure they weren't being smuggled? Story 3. Actual cop here. I work midnights and one night I'm sitting in my cruiser at like 2am doing paperwork. I see an older model car driving slowly around the area and then pull into an abandoned parking lot and black out in the corner by the woods. No lighting. This is for a building that is being torn down. This is not normal, so I'll look into it. I pull up to him and get out. How are you doing? I asked. What's going on in this parking lot tonight? He's got bags full of something in his back seat and he's alone. He's an older guy and he seems a little off. He tells me, I'm here to feed the cats. I think to myself that this is a BS answer, an attempt to call his bluff. Okay, where are the- Then, like 40 cats come running out of the woods. The guy asks, may I? And I say, uh, sure. He gets out of the car and starts feeding the cats, dry food from his bags. The closest thing I can describe it as was the scene in Ace Ventura where all of his pets come out of hiding. Okay, go on about your business, I guess. And then I left. Story 4. My cousin is a cop and told us the story of seeing a car driving slowly at about 3am through a neighborhood that has had several break-ins. He thinks to himself that they're looking for a target, so he puts on his lights and pulls them over. He walks up and the driver puts the window down and she turns to look at him with fire in her eyes and she says in a harsh whisper, This had better be important because I just got the baby to sleep. He looks in the back and there's a baby in the car seat, sound asleep. The memory of what it was like when his babies wouldn't sleep rushes back and he says, Oh no, I'm so sorry, never mind and goes back to his car. She drives away slowly. He's just glad he didn't wake the baby. Babies are either in the lightest sleep of all time or the deepest sleep of all time. Although I guess that it's possible that the cop just put on the lights, not the sirens. In which case that would be good because it's late at night. Actually, that's probably what happened, huh? So never mind. It's just good that the cop didn't wake up the baby. But seriously though, have you ever been like around a baby and you make a loud, loud noise while they're sleeping and you're like, oh no, it's over and they don't make a noise and they don't wake at all. But then when they're like just drifting off to sleep and you make any sort of noise whatsoever, they are up and they're ready to go. Story five. My husband told me a story of one time when he was patrolling around. He spotted a guy who was in a straight jacket come around the corner of the town he was patrolling in. Instantly suspicious. He ran over and grabbed him and asked what he was doing. He said he was just messing around with it with a friend, but he lost his friend and can't get out. So my husband asked to call his friend just in case and lo and behold, he wasn't even lying. Story 6. Cop here, well, technically military. I'm an officer with the Portuguese National Republican Guard similar to the French gendarmes. We're generally responsible for policing rural, low-population areas, though we do also take on some military-slash-expeditionary roles, like our peacekeeping presence in Timor. The point is, if you live in rural Portugal, we're the ones who are going to come when you need help or have trouble. About two years ago, there was a murder. Old man stabbed and bled out in his kitchen. The wife came home to find him dead, lying on the counter. She called 112, the 911 equivalent, 
and I was dispatched along with some colleagues. Paramedics confirmed the death on site, but we didn't want to move the body before the judiciary police could have a look and do forensics. Not only that, but the old lady wasn't doing too well with the shock. So after about 20 minutes of her hyperventilating, we got her into the ambulance, and paramedics took her to the hospital. That means me and my colleague were left guarding the body and trying to keep things as we found them, while still looking around for evidence. About an hour later, we hear a truck arrive. My colleague goes up from the basement where we were, but I stay longer to have a better look around. Come back 10 minutes later to find the body... gone. I look outside and see two guys shoving it into the back of a nondescriptive refrigerated truck. I come out running and yelling with my gun out, thinking the murderer was back and trying to cover their tracks. My colleague steps out from behind the truck. Turns out the morgue's vehicle was broken and they were using a rental to transport the bodies. The two guys I saw were morgue workers and just putting the body in the truck to carry it to the morgue, while my colleague was talking with a third. The judiciary police only came about two hours later. They didn't, like, radio to you that they were taking the body away or anything? That seems important. I can understand why OP was freaked out here. Although I don't really understand the assumption that it was the perpetrator, because that would be... that would be pretty bold to come back to the scene of the crime and take the body away. Story 7. Here's a story from a family friend who was a sergeant in a major West Coast city. One of his new officers was late for roll call one night. After about 45 minutes, sergeant gets a call from another station asking if he was the sergeant for the missing officer. Hilarity ensues. Apparently, the missing officer was getting ready to leave his apartment for roll call for the night shift, and as he walked out to the stairs, he sees a guy in a ski mask hop through his neighbor's window. Cop radios the burglary in progress and runs back to his apartment to get a shotgun. When he gets back to the neighbor's house, he heard a female screaming and the sounds of a struggle. Cop announces himself, kicks open the front door, runs to the kitchen and sees what he thinks is Ski Mask Guy assaulting the neighbor. The neighbor sees Cop with a shotgun screaming at Ski Mask Guy and she completely freaks out. Turns out Ski Mask Guy was neighbor's boyfriend slash husband, doing some sort of roleplay fantasy at neighbor's request. At least nobody got shot, and apparently the cop was known thereafter as Officer Dong Block. Look, if your roleplay fantasy whatever involves stuff that looks that suspicious in public, I feel like you kind of have it coming. No pun intended. Story 8. 3am on a weeknight, and I pull up behind a car at a light. The light is green and the car is stopped, but running. Foot was on the brake. Light turns red, so I wait behind him. Light turns green again, and this dude isn't moving. So my partner and I quietly exit our vehicle and approach his. He was completely passed out, asleep, with the car in drive. We woke him up and talked to him to make sure he wasn't drunk and he was just tired. It was because his wife had had a baby a few days ago and needed him to run to the store for something. That newborn sleep deprivation is real. Okay, but real talk, if someone is this tired while driving, that is just as, if not more, dangerous than being drunk. Like, there are real studies done about this. Being sleep deprived and driving is dangerous. Always assess whether you're good to drive before you go, whether you've had anything or not. Because let's be real, on the road you're not only putting yourself at risk, you're putting others at risk too, and that's not really fair. Story 9. Obligatory, I am not a cop, but... Funniest story of mine about this stuff was years and years ago. Okay, several decades ago. I'm old, sue me. Guy was arrested for arson. A neighbor in a subdivision backing up to the farm saw him methodically move all of the valuables out of the barn over a period of a week, then closely mowed the hayfields for about 50 yards radius all around the barn. He was puzzled over the mowing when he noticed the farmer walk all around the barn, pouring something from a blue gas can right at the bottom of the barn walls. Neighbor looks away for less than a minute, and when he looks back, the barn is fully engulfed in flames. He calls the fire department and reports the farmer has set his barn on fire with gas or something. Fire department is on scene in about five minutes, and reports that the barn is already beyond saving. They do smell diesel fuel. A quick investigation says it's arson. Field is mowed to prevent the spread. The burned barn has nothing much in it, but the other barn and shed overhang has a lot of stuff recently placed, with grass underneath still green. Definite marks of petroleum accelerant. They arrest the farmer on the spot and he says nothing. Farmer refuses to talk to the DA and asks for his lawyer. I am on the jury, where the prosecution states that they will prove the farmer set his own barn on fire. Barn was insured and insurance fraud was the motive. They all call the expected witness, the neighbor. They play the 911 call, interview the fireman who smelled fuel and saw marks of accelerant on the ground, etc. Defense does no cross-examination at all. Prosecution is done, defense has their turn. Defense calls the farmer, and the first question asked is, Let's cut to the chase. Did you burn your barn down? Yep. Why did you do it? It was old and rotten with termites, going to fall down. Not safe. Hmm. Have you always burned down old farm buildings? Yep. My daddy did it before me. It's a farm. 
Are you aware that you need a permit to burn debris in this county? Been doing it like this on this farm since we had dangerous engines. Never had no permit. The fine is up to $50. Oh, wait, I forgot. You're zoned active agriculture and are exempt. No permit needed. But why didn't you tell any of this to the police? They didn't ask until after they put handcuffs on me and took me to the police station. They told me anything I said would be used against me, and said I had the right to remain silent, and then some lawyer guy came in and told me I was going to prison for insurance fraud. I remember Perry Mason said don't talk to anyone but your lawyer, so I didn't. Did you file an insurance claim? What for? The barn wasn't worth anything in that state, and I moved all the stuff out. I suggested we try to talk them out of this. You said you wanted your day in court. What's up with that? They came on my land, arrested me without telling me what for, told me later it was for arson and insurance fraud, and put that in the papers. All my friends, relatives, and neighbors know about this. They made me look dishonest. I want to make sure everyone knows the real facts. I figure this is better than them just dropping it, because then everyone would just wonder whether they just decided to not send an old man to prison. Defense rests. Story 10. I am the suspect in the situation. I lived in a large town in the south of the UK in my own terraced house. Outside my house was a bus stop, so it had a few people who would go by outside each day, but it wasn't in the heart of the high street. I had suffered from cluster flies for a few days and they came out of nowhere. We're talking maybe 50 or so, which is a little alarming, but there was nowhere I could see they were coming from. I got rid of them as quick as they came about and went about my day as normal. One day on the weekend, I had a knock at the door with riot police, who stated they believed that someone had died in the property, and they were able to enter under an emergency act of law without a warrant. In their wisdom, they spoke to the neighbors about who lived here after a report from an elderly lady visiting the bus stop. The neighbors mentioned my ex-girlfriend, who they didn't see for a few months. We broke up and she moved out, but the police put the flies report and this fact together as me being a murderer. The police were sure I had something to hide, as they instantly didn't believe I owned the house. I work in IT and make good money, and I'm thankful I saved hard enough to get on the housing ladder, but they weren't having any of it. I had to then wait under surveillance while my house was searched and riot police all in the street. I am a keen gardener and upstairs in the airing cupboard I was attempting to grow some seeds. The police were convinced that 23-year-old me was instead running a cannabis factory. In the end, they found no dead body and realized their mistake when I pointed out the 50 cacti around the house they conveniently didn't notice. I'm sure I'm on some kind of list now, but they left almost disappointed that their amazing detective work found an IT nerd that likes spiny flora and not the next serial murderer. OP, this wasn't even suspicious. They put two and two together and found five. I don't know what else to say. OP did nothing wrong here. An elderly lady just got freaked out by some flies, and the cops took it ten steps further. Story 11. Son of a cop. My dad told me about a time back in the 80s. My father was sitting in his cruiser around the corner from a bar. A car drives by, swerving a little with exhaust coming from the tailpipe, signifying a recently started vehicle. Pulls the guy over, smells alcohol on the driver while also noticing a large staff in the back seat. He has the driver step out, then inquires about the staff. The driver tells my dad, I'm a black belt in kung fu, I use it in class. So my father, unconvinced, asks him to demonstrate his proficiency with the staff, proving his sobriety in a sort of impromptu field sobriety test. The driver puts on a little show for dad on the side of the road. Dad's enjoying the show, but starts to hear sirens coming from all directions. A passerby had seen my dad on the str- A passerby had seen my dad on the side of the road in a face-off with a crazy man with a stick. Thinking my dad was in need of help, the passerby called the cops. Apparently my dad had been so wrapped up in the show he had not heard the radio calls for him, so dispatch sent all available units to his rescue. Passerby thought my dad was getting his butt kicked by a ninja. That is cool as hell. But like, also what about the what about the alcohol he smelled on the driver? Like what about that? Did did we just forget about that or was it just like insignificant amount? I don't know. Apparently kung fu can get you out of DUIs. That's not legal advice. I think I need to say that. Story 12. The first one that comes to mind for me. Late at night, saw a dude hauling copper pipe out of a local grocery store after it closed down. Copper theft at the time was super common, so I thought I had a burglary in progress. I stop out, get ready for an easy arrest. Ask him what he's doing. He said he was hired to clean the place out. Ask why he's taking the copper. Owner told him that his payment was the copper piping. Since it wasn't going to be a grocery store after, they didn't need it. I didn't buy it for a minute. BS detector was screaming at this point. So I find the owner in our records and call him. 
And guess what? Dude was hired to clean the place out and was paid in copper pipe. That was the agreement. But then I asked him why he was doing it at 2am since it was super suspicious. Since the place closed down, there was no AC. As it was the middle of summer, 2am was the best way to do it and keep cool. Story 13. Recently, I was conducting an S18 house search on a guy we'd arrested in a local club with loads of drugs on him. In his room, I found an oversized, out-of-place vase with fake flowers in them. Suspicion raised. I take the flowers out and in the bottom, I saw what I believed to be a balaclava. Here we go. I took it out, unfolded it, and it turned out to be a jumper for a small dog? Huh. I look in the vase again. I see a blue velvet drawstring bag. I manipulate it slightly and it rustles, with the feeling of lots of little packets inside. I remove it slowly, open the bag, and inside are some retro scrabble pieces. What the hell? We didn't find any further drugs in his room. We didn't find any further drugs in his room. We did, however, find a huge screw-off-sized machete under his mattress wrapped up in a tea towel, so that was interesting. Still confused as hell about the contents of that vase, though. Story 14. Police officer here. Long story short, guy gets locked out of his house by his wife and we catch him trying to get back in. It was just after midnight and we'd gotten a call of a suspicious person looking into a home. We respond code 2, lights, no sirens, and switch off the lights before we get close to mask our approach. As we pull up to the house, we see no signs of anyone at the house, so we walk around the rear and BAM! Guy with a crowbar wrenching on the back door. I yell, police, drop the crowbar! Dude starts screaming and nearly crying because we scared him so bad. Turns out he went to Tim Hortons to get a coffee as him and the wife had a few drinks and he forgot his keys and cell phone in the house. She was so drunk she forgot he left and locked the doors like she does every night. Poor bastard tried to wake his wife up and she was passed out and didn't hear him. He grabbed a crowbar from his shed to try and pop the locking mechanism out and we caught him. We managed to get a hold of her by calling her on my cell. When she answered the door, she admitted to accidentally locking him out and gave us the exact same sequence of events. I honestly wish we had body cam so we could replay the poor bastard's face and high-pitched scream. Edit. So to address a few things, one, our service does not have tasers. We train constantly in advanced hand-to-hand -hand tactics. We're getting tasers soon, though. Two, our hands were on our guns, but after yelling the challenge and hearing him scream and drop the crowbar, we de-escalated the situation completely. When you hear a door being wrenched on, you know there may be an improvised weapon involved. Hence, for officer safety, we were ready should he charge us. Story 15. I'm the guy who is doing something suspicious, but it kind of fits here. When I used to work at a grocery store, I would get off sometime between 10pm and 12am, and I also preferred to ride my bike most of the year to save on gas. Since work was close to my house and there were few cars out, I never really bothered with lights. Already suspicious, I know. Right around Thanksgiving, we would get in these massive stalks of Brussels sprouts, which if you've never seen one, they look like something you might find growing on an alien planet. A solid three feet of little bulbs at the end of spikes, basically. They were super cheap, so I couldn't pass up a deal. But of course, the only way for me to transport it home at night was to ride with the stalk sticking a foot out of my backpack. I have no idea what the cops thought when I was pulled over. Weed? A weapon? They were doing their deal when one talks to me and the other checks me out from behind. When the one behind me busted out laughing. Are those... <laughs> Brussels sprouts? They let me go a minute after. Story 16. Not a cop, but do work in law enforcement. This is part of a more elaborate story. At one point while in jail, Suspect 1 told a suspected hitman that if he took a deal, he wouldn't get paid. Everyone freaked out as this was clear confirmation number 1 had hired number 2, as suspected. After much investigation, they were both innocent. Just a series of really dumb things and belligerence toward officers preventing explanations. Turns out the comment was because genius number 1 had the idea to sue everyone for his arrest and was trying to say that if number two took a plea deal, he wouldn't be able to get in on the lawsuit.